Now is a special time in our program where, where we present our Catholic Citizens Award, St. Thomas More Award for Catholic Citizenship. And the person we're presenting it to tonight is Dan Sheely. And I want to give you a little bit of his biography so you'll know why we have selected him, him for this. Dan was born and raised in Melrose Park. He attended Fenwick High School and worked through high school at the Jewel Stores. He won a competitive scholarship to assist with his college costs, and he continued to work throughout college. He attended Princeton University during the 60s and majored in the Woodrow Wilson School of Government, graduating with honors in Phi Beta Kappa. During the turbulent 60s, he actively, vocally defended the values of, of Christian civilization and freedom and was the opposition leader in the undergraduate assembly to the prevailing leftism of the time. With his friends, he helped successfully defeat the fight to prevent the ROTC from banning, being banned from Princeton and was recognized for that in the national media. At Princeton, he, after Princeton, he was admitted to the Harvard Law School from which he graduated in 1974. And while at Harvard, two colleagues, with two colleagues, he founded the Harvard Law Students for Life in the immediate aftermath of Roe v. Wade and led a group to participate in the first March for Life in Washington. After law school, he was in, employed by an international law firm of Baker and McKenzie as a litigator. He eventually became a partner in, the, partner in the firm, handling a large docket of cases. He served as associate training director for the litigation department in Chicago. He departed from Baker and McKenzie after 20 years of service to form his own law firm. He remained active in both political and religious affairs, particularly in educational programs for youth and adults with special interests in Catholic apologetics. With two other friends in the legal profession, he formed the Chicago Catholic Evidence Forum to present short courses in the evidence of Catholicism. He also formed the Church History Forum through which he taught a free course in history of the church for 20 years in the Chicago Loop. He's often requested by tele Catholic television, Chicago television, excuse me, and radio and news media to provide an Orthodox Catholic perspective on news stories involving the church. His comments have appeared in addition to within the local media in Newsweek, New York Times, the National Catholic Register, The Wanderer, and the Catholic World Report. He served on the board of directors, the local Sarah Club, which is the club to develop that develops vocations in the church, the Catholic Lawyers Guild, and he was one of the founding members of Catholic Citizens of Illinois. He was named by his peers in the legal profession as one of the leading lawyers of Illinois in the specialty of litigation. He is the recipient of the Golden Rose Award from St. John Cantus for his service to the church and was named Catholic Lawyer of the Year in 2014 by the Catholic Lawyers Guild of Chicago. On the last day of the year, 2014, he retired from the practice of law, and in the meantime, he had, in his spare time, he had obtained a master's degree in theology. Since January 2015, he has worked as Director of Evangelization for Chicago Catholic Parishes, and is currently serving in the, uh, as Director of Evangelization and Catechesis for the Church of St. Mary the Angels in Chicago. Here is a real Catholic man, and we're happy to honor him with our award today. says Catholic Citizens of Illinois presents to Dan Sheely the St. Thomas More Award for Catholic Citizenship for his evangelization and courageous defense of the Catholic faith in the public square presented on October 30th 2017 in Lombard, Illinois. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I've been given him permission to say a few words. <laughs> Look out. Uh, First of all, I really want to say that thanks belong to the person that really should have this award are really Marianne Hackett and the directors 
of Catholic citizens of Illinois who valiantly, without thanks sometimes, put their reputations, their, their convenience, and their resources on the line to defend just because they want to, just because they believe in it, the Catholic faith. And I think uh, thanks to them and to all of you really for supporting these people who are trying to really speak up to give a voice to what we believe in in the public square. So thanks to Catholic citizens of Illinois. They deserve, they deserve this award. And of course, the real person who deserves the Thomas More Award is the person who, through her mission of showing Catholic love to me and to our children, my wife, Pat Sheely, she is the one who has been uh, incarnate of the Catholic belief system in my life, showing Christ's love to me and to our children. So Pat, my hat's always off to you. And thank you for everything. And, and let, it's a special honor to, to be here uh, at this particular day when Bishop Athanasius Schneider is coming to speak to us. I, Saint Athanasius, I'm a historian, is someone who defended the Catholic faith when it seemed like he was the only voice that could be heard in the civilized world to stand up for what was handed down to us. And he was a hero. And I think Bishop Schneider is living up to his name, and it's an honor to be in the same room with him, it's an honor to breathe the same air that he's breathing, and it's an honor to receive this award where a, a, a truly heroic person like Bishop Schneider is, is among us. Bishop Schneider, please. Uh, somebody once asked me, uh, yeah, I'd, be, I'd speak at, a, at an event or I'd defend the faith somewhere. They'd say, where did this guy get all this stuff? Where did this all begin? He's just a punk from Melrose Park. Where did, where did he get this? And where it began, I, obviously where it began, of course, was my baptism. You know, but I am too, uh, I don't remember that when it happened, and as great as it was. But there is one thing I do remember. I do remember very, very well. Or it's my first memory of getting really attracted to the Catholic faith. And it was another heroic bishop on TV, Bishop Fulton Sheen. I remember, God bless him. I was about six years old, and I uh, see this bishop on TV, and he is so full of life. His eyes had a sparkle to them. His, his whole demeanor was full of enthusiasm, and he was talking about something very, very complicated, but with great earnestness and with great animation, and, and, and it seemed like he was explaining something that was very complicated uh, in a way that everyone was, was just in rapt attention. Certainly my, my relatives were sitting on the, uh, uh, the, the, in the living room listening to Fulton Sheen. And I said to myself, I was six years old, I said, you know, this priest is very smart. <laughs> I don't understand a word he's saying. <laughs> but I want to know. And someday I will know. I'm going to find out what Bishop Sheen is talking about. I'm going to find out what makes him so full of life. And I began, and Bishop Sheen introduced me to uh, reading about Christ and his church. I devoured his books and other books about the faith, and he sort of actually made me fall in love. And it wasn't in love with Fulton Sheen, it was love with the fountain of love itself, the, the uncreated love, the love that set the stars in motion, the love from which all love comes, from which all love goes back to all real love. That reality of love incarnate, love on two legs, Jesus Christ. And I, it was, Christ that Sheen talked about and preached was not an abstract Christ, not a stick man Christ, not a Christ that was just simply 
whatever you might make of him. He was a real, it is a real person. Someone who speaks, gave words, did deeds, real objective things. The way, the truth, and the life. Now we hear those words and we take them as something that is almost just an expression that we know is part of our Catholic faith. But each of those words means something. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the life. And if that's so, we don't back away from Jesus Christ. We don't explain away his teachings. We don't subtract from his teachings. Instead, we embrace them. We, so because why do we embrace them? We, we embrace them to, so that he can embrace us. So that this real Christ, this real person, can be not just someone who we make up, but someone who we really get to know and who can make us sparkle the way he made Fulton Sheen sparkle with, with that love. And I think back to uh, what St. Paul told that little church in Thessalonica, hold fast to the traditions that I taught you. And indeed, Christ himself in the book of Revelation says to several of the churches, hold fast. And why, why would the Holy Writ tell us to hold fast? Because to hold fast to our traditions means to hold fast to the real Christ, the objective reality of this real person. To hold fast to that, to the teaching that was given to us from the apostles, it is still alive in our hearts now. Then we get to feel that embrace. Then we get to not just talk about Christ, but to actually embrace his life. And then when we have the embrace of the real Christ that we cling to, then we can get that same sparkle that filled the eyes of Fulton Sheen and filled the hearts and soul of John Paul and filled the whole spirit of Mother Teresa and indeed filled the heart of Thomas More, whom this award is named after. That comes from, from being embraced by the real Christ, following him, not making him conform to us. We conform to him, and in so doing, we receive his love. And so, in accepting this wonderful award that I feel entirely unworthy to take, I can give you no better advice than what St. Paul and our Lord gave to the early church. Hold fast. Do not abandon the teaching of Christ. Hold fast to that because that truth is the truth of love, which gives life, which is Christ, and gives joy and adventure to all of our lives. Thank you.